I'm Steven. And I'm Kevin. In today's episode of The Steven and Kevin Show, we're going to talk about getting the most out of a coaching relationship. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to episode 41 of The Stephen and Kevin Show. And today we're going to be talking about getting the most out of a coaching relationship. Right. And we cover this topic because we are in the business of coaching. We've coached thousands of advisors over the years. And some people, frankly, get more out of coaching than others <laughs> because of their actions, right? We want to make sure from our perspective, we line you up with a great coach who's well-prepared for sessions, who's a pro's pro in terms of coaching you to higher performance. But on your side of things, obviously, it's a it's a partnership here. So we're going to offer some tips from some of the clients we've worked with who've gotten the most out of us, seen the, the most growth with us. And uh, I think we've got nine or so nuggets we're going to walk you through today. Yeah, and, and we realize that um, a lot of coaching clients, our coaching clients, watch the, the pod, or watch the podcast. That sounds kind of funny, right? But they watch the YouTube show or they listen to the podcast. Uh, and so we thought, oh, geez, this is going to be really help, helpful for them. We know a lot of other, the rest of you, you might have a coach, and that's okay. Um, you know, maybe it's not an Oxley Institute coach. Now, we'd like for it to be an Oxley Institute coach, but maybe it's not. And, uh, and that, that's okay, too. We're going to just talk about getting the most out of these types of relationships. All right. Tip number one, be prepared for each session. And you're thinking already, gosh, this is going to be a boring podcast. Yeah, that's like the most basic of advice, uh, right? But this is an important one. And by being prepared, we don't mean having a laundry list of 35 different action items you want to talk about with your coach. But, uh, but, but remembering some of the situations you've been through since you last spoke with your coach. Typically, our coaching sessions are spread two weeks apart. And a lot happens within two weeks. If you find yourself on a coaching session reaching for, what in the world did I do in the last two weeks? Perhaps you could have taken a little better notes as to, was there a prospect you approached that just wasn't interested? Mm -hmm. Was there an answer that you really flubbed when a, cl a client asked you to, you know, to clarify this or that? You know, what, what was it that happened situationally that you could debrief on with your coach and come out with a better response for next time? Kind of taking some time in advance to reflect on what's occurred. Yeah, what happened and, you know, what are a couple of things that I, I'd like to ask the coach about or, or bring up for conversation today? It always helps. Good one. Uh, next one here is collaborate. You know, this is not a relationship where you throw out something and then you kind of sit back like it's a webinar and you just listen to a, a coach pontificate and, and give all the answers, right. right? This is something where you guys are working collaboratively. One of our coaches, Greg Blackwell, will tell his clients that, look, this is not theater. This is not, hey, throw me something and then you sit back and I'm going to give you this presentation. This is a relationship. And, uh, and, and by the way, if you collaboratively work on the answers to, you know, how to get over certain obstacles that you're, you're working through, you're going to be more likely to take action as opposed to you have a coach just telling you exactly what to do. That's it. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, it's not there. It's not your idea as well. So collaborate, work together, uh, share what, what's, what's working, what's not, and what's going on in your life. Gotcha. Uh, number three, be prepared to do some things differently. And uh, a couple of points on that. A lot of times we come into a coaching relationship with years and years of industry experience, and you've got some preconceptions about what works and what doesn't, right? If you've been in the business 10 or 20 or 30 years, you've got in your mind some things that, hey, this works, this doesn't, I've tried that many years ago, right? Sure. Rethink those. Rethink them again. And, and let your coach guide you into some actions that, you know, maybe here to date uh, you've ruled out. Also, you know, let them push you into some areas that, frankly, you've been uncomfortable in in the past. Hmm. So if you, you know, here to date have been a little bit shy about approaching people for business that you know socially, let your coach push you into some of these behaviors. It feels good. It's invigorating. And they're not doing it because they like to see your pain. They do it because it works for other people. And, and the, more of you, the, the more of those out of comfort zone activities you do, the more comfortable they become. Great one. Uh, next one here is embrace accountability. Right. I mean, accountability is an act of will. You have to want it. No one can just hold you accountable if you don't want to be held accountable, but you should embrace it. I and mean, if you're looking to always improve and, and have a really high standard for what you're doing, you should want someone who's holding you accountable. Um, and, you know, here's another tip, though. Don't commit to too much. Right. When you're working with, with a coach and, and they're holding you accountable, don't say, yeah, Stephen, I'm going to get all 10 of these things done. It, it's probably not going to happen. Pick a couple things that you know that you're really going to work hard to get done between now and the next time. I've gotten to the point with one of my clients where we pick one thing, hmm. just one thing, right? 
Does he need a second opinion? Or speak, <laughs> you know? No, he's doing fantastic. But, you know, he actually brought up the concept because we would give him an action item of three yeah. or four things. He said, can we just pick one? I, I know I'll get it done. Just pick the most important item. Yeah, I like it. I think yep. there's something, too, also biting off um, small enough items to where you're you're sticking to what you say you're going to stick to. Yes. Right. It makes you feel good that I came back. I said I was going to do two or three things, and I did them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next one, communicate your desires to your coach. People come into coaching with a, a, a lot of different ideas about how it works, and that's fine. There, there We have a lot of different uh, styles of coaching that take place. Exactly. Even though we have one program, there's a lot of different styles. And by that, I mean some people come to us and they say, you know, I really want somebody who can be a, a source of new ideas for our team. Right? I want We're someone who's going to motivate us. Right. There's some right? people want a motivator. Some people want somebody to hold them accountable. Somebody want uh, some uh, clients come to us because they want uh, a coach who's going to be kind of a third party looking in on their team and helping guide some of the discussions. Mm -hmm. right? They come in. Some people come in wanting 30 minute action packed calls. Some people want to take a, a, a 60 minute, very deliberate, thorough walkthrough of what's going on. Yep. Right. And these are all just fine by us. Mm -hmm. Right. These are your preferences. We're fine by. But you have to communicate it to your coach. Right? Yeah, you I have I, to let your coach know that, hey, you know, going forward, uh, you know, really stick it to me on this accountability thing. Right. I really value that in our relationship or, you know, don't feel like we have to go 60 minutes today. I've got a lot going on. I'd love to just take, you know, 35 minutes and go through points A, B and C. Right? I like that. I mean, giving your coach a little bit of feedback mm -hmm. um, and, and the coach will at, from time to time ask you for feedback, but don't be shy about sharing it with them. Mm -hmm. um, next one here is avoiding interruptions being present in the moment during a coaching session. This is your time to to reflect, to focus on yourself. This is it's it's a great idea if you're not focused on a particular document you're working with the coach on to turn your monitor off. Um, put your phone on do not disturb. Uh, you know really you know and I know we've done a lot of coaching. You we can tell the difference. We can tell when we're coaching someone uh, and they have something else that might be distracting them, mm -hmm. right? It, it, there's a big difference, and they're not getting as much value as they should be getting out of that out yeah. of the session. Yeah, go sit across the office in a different chair where you don't have all the distractions. Mm -hmm. One of the things I like to do in, in my office. You know, one of, one of my coaching clients, he does, we, we meet in the morning, and that's the morning that he comes late into the office because he stays at home because when he's in the office, people are always interrupting him, even if mm -hmm. we're during sessions. So he does the session from home. Cool. Uh, the next one, drastically change your behavior. And the, hmm. the reason we say drastically is that sometimes it's easier to incorporate big wholesale change than it is incremental change, which sounds kind of crazy, right? If I wanted to, to rethink my diet and exercise and I were just totally, uh, right, not, not exercising and not eating well, it might be a little harder for me to, to kind of poke around at it, eat a little fewer uh, sugar, uh, a little bit less sugar every day walk a little bit as it would be for me to say, you know what, I'm going to change my lifestyle. This is a big deal. I'm mm -hmm. telling everybody about it. I'm going to walk every day. I'm going to eat a little bit better. Um, and, and that doesn't come out of thin air. This is something that we read about from Dr. Dean Ornish a while back. And let me, let me read you a little bit about what he said about this. Please he says, do. radical sweeping comprehensive changes are often easier for people than small incremental ones. For example, he says that people who make moderate changes in their diets get the worst of both worlds. They feel deprived and hungry because they aren't eating everything they want, but they aren't making big enough changes to quickly see improvement. Right? Yep. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. I think that one's interesting too, seeing the improvement part. Right. of Right. So he says the heart patients who went on his tough radical program saw quick dramatic results, right? They really got after it, but they were stickier too. They were more likely to stick with those programs. Uh, so a, uh, I'll, I'll spare you all the details of the results they got, but it was a highly effective program. And the takeaway for all of us is when you're thinking about making changes to, let's say, your marketing, don't think I'm going to bring in an extra client or two this year leveraging some of these strategies. Think, you know what? I'm going to make next year a big year for me. I'm going to commit to a lot of different things I hadn't done previously, and I'm going to allow myself to be held accountable to doing all this. Yeah, I, I like that. Big, radical change. Uh, you know, I think even like in exercising, I was thinking about this the other day. I was trying, I'm trying to get more and more into, into running, and I don't, I'm not saying, hey, I'm running twice a week. I'm not trying to run every single day, right? And if you run every single day, then you see more results. You feel better about yourself. Again, that's the whole radical change stuff. Um, next one here is be on time. So if you're not on time with your coach, you probably aren't on time with a lot of things in your life. You want to be congruent there. Um, I think it's 
uh, letting your coach know if you're going to miss a session. I think that's just a good, you know, respectful thing to do. And if you're going to be five minutes late, let your coach know as well. I mean, your coach is going to be there. They're going to be on time. They're, they're ready to go. They're prepared. So you need to, you know, be congruent as well. Yeah, I like it. Uh, last one for me, deliberately practice. You know, so you, you get a lot done in your coaching sessions, but there's an opportunity outside of those sessions too, whether it's role play with your team mm -hmm. or whether it's uh, – coming to the Affluent Marketing Symposium to get in some practice. But getting in some practice that's not out live in the field with real people, with real prospects and clients, right. but getting a little bit of time to yourself to work on your skills, to, to role play, to think about the words coming out of your mouth, and just looking for ways to get better. Yeah, I like that one. Um, so it's not using a, a big prospect as a guinea pig. Yeah, well, that's always <laughs> a smart idea. Uh, next one here, the final one for me is no sugar coating. Um, this is about being honest and open with your coach. If you are not, you're just not going to get as much out of it. And the coach isn't going to be on the same page. And they don't know, like, if you if you have a fear of something, you should talk to your coach about it. If you're not confident in a particular scenario or situation or doing a particular marketing tactic, you should talk to your coach about it because they will either help you get over that fear um, by, by talking you through it, give you a different way to look at it, or decide that, hey, maybe that's not the right approach for you. You gotta be open, no sugarcoating with your coach. Right, so these are some tips to help you get the more out of your coaching relationships. For any of you who, who have never had a coach, consider getting one. I mean, it's it, it's an investment into your career to where you've, you're flat out guaranteed next year to do more of the right behaviors, whether you're coming to us for growing your business or better running your team or mm -hmm. working on some of the practice management things, you are guaranteed to take more action next year if you've engaged one of our coaches. And so what's that investment worth to your business? And uh, if you haven't done it already, uh, we'll link to the coaching consultation form. We'd love to have you fill it out. So thanks for joining us, everybody. Thanks, everyone.